I almost didn't make this video because I like to keep my content positive and uplifting. However, I also believe in telling the truth. And the truth is, what this team did to me was an absolute disgrace to the game and embodies everything I hate about hockey culture. This was one of the worst experiences I've ever had with hockey. But before we get things started, let's roll that intro. Hello everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Rocha, I'm a 24 year old Canadian hockey goalie from Sudbury, Ontario. I spent the last two seasons of hockey playing in Finland. My first season I played with Moik in Division 3, where we won the championship, and then last year I signed in Division 2 with the Nivo Cowboys. I loved playing in Finland, however I wanted to explore different options just to see if I could advance my hockey career. Over the summer I talked to my agent about new possibilities for this season. We eventually settled on signing with Baton Rouge Zydeco, which was an expansion team in the FPHL, aka the Fed. Originally, I was a bit hesitant to sign there just because I've heard some horror stories from the Fed. And boy, are those probably right, <laughs> you know, but it is what it is. Originally, when I signed the contract, I talked with the coach. Everything seemed pretty good, seemed to have a pretty good rapport with him. I was basically gonna, supposed to come in there as a number one, number two guy. I understand that as a goalie, you obviously have to perform. And, you know, I'm not one of those guys where everything, I want everything to be given to me. I want to earn it. However later on I found out that it was not the case at all and there was basically no opportunity to even play on this team so originally when I talked to my agent I had a deal with him and then after about a month or so the coach of the team wanted me to sign with his agency because supposedly he's a coach and also an agent another kind of red flag but regardless um, decided to agree to his terms sign in with his agency or whatever and then he would kind of work out a deal with my agent I asked my agent, obviously, if that was cool with him, and he seemed fine with it because supposedly he knew the guy from before. So over the summer, I was training pretty hard, uh, training with some pretty top-level guys, some NHLers, a few guys in the AHL, OHL, top-end junior guys. So I was feeling really good coming into camp. Unfortunately, our camp didn't start till October 7th, which is a really late start. So there was kind of like a few weeks where everybody had already left to their teams, and you couldn't really train because it was just nobody left. And as a goal, you kind of need shooters. But, you know... That's not the end of the world. Still felt really confident, feeling re really ready coming into camp. Camp was originally supposed to start on the 7th, but it got pushed back to the 15th. Unfortunately, I, I had already made plans to go down there earlier with my friend Susie. We were going to stop in Nashville and New Orleans, see a Saints game. Yeah, overall, great trip down. Um, if you've been following some of my videos, I documented that whole trip. Pretty cool. I'll put a link up here. But because of the delay, I wanted to see if I can get on the ice earlier. So I noticed that there was one of the players that was already living in Louisiana. So I sent him a message on Instagram. He didn't answer me bit odd so I waited a few more days and I thought okay maybe he doesn't use Instagram or something so then I sent him a message on Facebook still no response thought that was a bit weird but whatever especially considering he was like posting on his stories and stuff then a few days later I got a message from the coach asking if I had messaged that player I was like yeah I did message the player <laughs> and he was like well, what did you need him for I was like well I was just curious if you know maybe I'd be nice to meet my new teammate uh, it'd be nice if we can get on the ice maybe um, he's a player I thought maybe he'd want to get some ice he could shoot on me and stuff like that I'm like is that a problem and then the coach responded and told me to not message that player anymore and to only discuss with him directly anything to do with the hockey that was a major red flag for me however there wasn't really much I could do at this point because it was getting so close to the season where I had already said no to other contracts in Europe so I was kind of train was on the tracks and I had to basically just kind of follow through with it I wasn't too worried originally because I thought once they saw me play, whatever politics or BS that was going on right now earlier before the season would kind of get thrown out the window, but it is what it is. So anyway, I decided to still go to camp, uh, packed up my car, got everything ready. I was actually really excited. It seemed like the city was really excited to have a team on social media and stuff. Uh, like It just seemed like there was a lot of buzz around a new team coming to Louisiana. I thought this was really exciting for everybody in Baton Rouge and the area, Lafayette, New Orleans, to have like a pro hockey team finally come to the South. So anyway, so packed up my bag, picked up my friend Brandon. We went to the border. Almost weren't allowed in. Yeah, just follow this guy. Okay. Wait, wish us luck, everyone. All right, if we make it across, we'll turn this on. If we don't, <laughs> see us. Yeah, so two hours later, they barely let me in. Uh, I can only stay till November 2nd. And then they said I have to leave the country. So... The team has to figure out a P visa or something. Feeling uh, not not great, to be honest. Uh, a little nervous that I might get deported. Um, so at that point, 
I was already kind of in a bit of a pickle because even if everything went well with the team and I made the team, I would have to come back to Canada and then go back to Louisiana, which would have been a complete nightmare, but whatever. Did the road trip, went down. Um, because of the delay in the in the start of main camp, I decided to go to a wedding in Denver. So after I dropped off Brandon at the airport, I continued my road trip, went through uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, up through Utah, back through Colorado, then down south. Basically did a whole trip of the U.S., um, if you've seen my other few videos, that's basically the documentation of that. And then, yeah, basically on my way back to camp, um, I saw one of the posts from the team's Instagram saying that they hired two new co-coaches. I thought this was a bit strange. I never heard the term co-coaches before in hockey. I thought perhaps maybe it was just like they didn't understand what assistant coach meant or something like that. Found out later that no, it did mean two co-coaches. Turns out the coach that I was talking to over the summer uh, was no longer going to be at camp and that they hired two new guys to basically co-coach, whatever that means. So that was another kind of red flag that they would have such a like weird coaching change as close to the season, especially since we're starting so late. After my road trip through through Denver, I drove back to Louisiana. Okay, everyone, we have made it to Lafayette. Uh, it's currently Friday. We have camp on Sunday night. We're starting very late. Not sure why. Uh, it seems like everybody's doing stuff and we're not. So, you know, gonna make do. Would be nice to have, I don't know, some communication, but fucking terrible, not gonna lie. Um, I can't put this in the vlog probably, but um, yeah, definitely not the best first impressions. However, the people at the rink are nice and I discovered that there's a public skate. So I would have loved to have had, you know, pucks and shooters and stuff, but you know, I'm gonna make do and I think I'm gonna go put on my gear and go to a public skate just to get on the ice. Uh, this is what it's like, life in the fed. Due to the long delay between my last ice session in Canada and the tryout in Louisiana, I thought it would be important to get on the ice at least once before camp. I tried reaching out to the coach and the new co-coaches, however, nobody seemed to want to help or care that I even existed. They didn't even want to meet me for coffee. All dressed, ready to go. So I decided to take things into my own hands and try to find my own ice. I went to the only open ice rink in the whole state of Louisiana. Luckily, the arena staff were very nice and accommodating. I know this wasn't the most ideal situation, however, sometimes you gotta do whatever it takes to be ready. I've been to enough trials to know that you only get one shot, and you gotta make it count. So if that means embarrassing myself in front of a group load of people, then so be it. Okay, it's been fun, we'll call it. They kicked me out of the other dressing room because I guess another team's coming. Um, so I have this fancy change room, the birthday room. God, I love it. Life in the fed. <sighs> what an exciting time. Got settled in a hotel, um, kind of just waiting for camp to start. Pier. We're cruising, got a nice bed. I'm excited. The next day. So, we are headed back to the rink in Lafayette, Planet Ice Center. Uh, this is day two of me being in Lafayette. I'm heading to a public skate because I can't get ice. And we have main camp starting on Sunday, and I want to be as ready as I can. So, yeah. Off to the public ski, it should be fun. I just have to say, I absolutely love this hotel. Uh, it's called True by Hilton. And the staff here are amazing. They have free tea and coffee. Uh, don't drink coffee, but tea is good. Um, I just found out they have a laundry facility here, which is unbelievable because I have a lot of laundry to do. And I'm really looking forward to have 
having clean clothes. I mean, I have some clean clothes left, but I'm going on my like backups. I'm getting into like the fourth line of my closet. So I'm excited. Make our way to the rink. I still have all my hockey gear. I didn't get robbed, so that's nice. And uh, I, I really like Lafayette. This is a really nice, really nice city. Not super big. It's a bit of a small townish vibe, which I like. I don't love lots of traffic, so um, this is right up my alley. So after a pretty productive skate on Friday, I decided to hit the ice again on Saturday to be as ready as I can be. You got to make the most of what life gives you. So when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And when life gives you public skates, you get your ass on the ice and do some movement. Not looking great. Not looking great. It's like there are a lot of cars here. So I am not sure if I'll be able to go full out skating, but it's okay. We'll make it work. Yeah, there are a lot of people on the ice right now. So we are not going to go full gear today. <laughs> This is how you train for the Fed. You get one of these little things right here. Help me learn how to skate. I did not expect this to be how my Saturday in Louisiana would go, but it's okay. While it was unfortunate I couldn't go full gear, it did give me a chance to talk to some of the locals who were really excited to have hockey come back to Louisiana. I even met some young kids who were fired up to meet a hockey player, as well as see my GoPro and asked if they could be in the vlog. Okay, we're back. My favorite hotel. While I was at the hotel, I met another goalie who was also there for camp. Hey guys, we're here with Devin. What's up guys? Great guy, by the way. Discussed with him, found out that he had a, a schedule that was emailed to him. He told me that we were supposed to meet at the hotel um, sometime around three o'clock the following day. I had not received any sort of updates or news or anything like that. So I was kind of in the dark. The, the last thing that I heard from the coach when I talked to him was to report at seven o'clock on the 15th at the arena. After talking with him for a bit, I kind of thought th something was off, but like I was already in Louisiana. There was nowhere else for me to go really at this point. So I, my, my rights were owned by this team. I couldn't really do anything. Plus I was excited to get on the ice. And I thought, like I said, I thought once they saw me play that, you know, all the judgment or whatever that they had beforehand would kind of go away. So yeah, I was talking with the goalie, um, found out that he had dealt with some suspicious activity I would say they were supposed to pick him up at the airport didn't so he had to get like an uber or a taxi basically from New Orleans all the way to Lafayette which is a couple hours I think that's crazy that they just left their players out to just basically figure it out on their own so when he got to the hotel actually he didn't even have a ride to get from the hotel that he was at that we were staying at to get to the rink so obviously I <laughs> happily offered to take him uh, my car was pretty full at the time but we made it work we jammed two goalie bags three sets of pads and all of our clothes, my clothes and his clothes. It was a bit of a tight squeeze, but we made it work. Give him a ride. The car is absolutely loaded with goalie. We have like three sets of pads, two goalie bags, all of my clothes plus his clothes. So it's, uh, <laughs> it'll be a tight squeeze, but we'll make it work. <laughs> oh, I get the bicep curls up oh. Perfect. Oh. Okay, we're cruising. Hotel here. We made it alive with a uh, very bad visibility. Uh, now we just have to wait for the team. Hopefully they show up. Um, the communication has not been the best, to be honest. <laughs> but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It'll get better today, hopefully. Yeah. I guess we'll go inside and wait. They said they'd be here after three. It's after three. So according to the itinerary, it said to show up after three o'clock, which we did. We showed up at like 3.04 or something like that. Got into the hotel, we saw some hockey bags. We're like, okay, cool, we're in the right spot. Well, we must be at the right place with hockey gear. Turns out there was a meeting at three o'clock, which wasn't in the itinerary. And I didn't even basically know any updates about this. It's a, it's a miracle I even showed up to this on time. Got into the meeting room. It was really awkward getting in there. Everybody was just like quiet. The coaches were sitting at like this like front table, kind of like a conference sort of vibe, but just no talking. Sat down for a bit, waited for a few minutes, and then they just kind of started their welcome talk, which wasn't even really a welcome talk. Basically, they rambled about how there be women in this city trying to take advantage of the players and to just be very careful and to not get involved with any women and that they're going to think that we make millions of dollars, even though we don't, which we definitely do not. Like, this was the only thing they were talking about, and it was basically the first talking point. And, like, I, I don't even remember what else we talked about because this was such a pressing issue for them. Um, supposedly, they had issues with a player previously which I don't understand how that's even possible because we all just arrived today, but 
regardless, it was just a weird, weird environment and a very strange. And I just thought it was, I don't know about inappropriate, but I, I didn't think it was the right time to just bring all of this stuff up when you're welcoming guys to the team. After that, we got put into rooms. I got placed with the guy I met at the other hotel, the other goalie. Uh, we decided to room together. Like I said, he was a great guy. New roomie, Devin. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so this is our hotel room, pretty decent. You happy, we got a nice pool. Probably won't use it, but got a desk. And uh, yeah, we just had a brief meeting. We got our training camp itinerary. And um, yeah, I'm happy we finally get this thing started. So it should be good. So yeah, after that we got settled into the hotel and then they handed out like a new itinerary, which is great because I finally had a sheet of paper to tell me what, what was what. However, the entire itinerary that they gave us was wrong. Um, so they basically handed out an itinerary and said, yeah, all the times on the years on this itinerary are wrong, which is kind of ridiculous that they would give us an itinerary and then basically nothing on it is correct. And later that day we went to the rink and then kind of got ready for the first skate of the day, basically. On the schedule, it had two ice sessions. It wasn't very organized on what was the plan was, if they were gonna divide us into two groups or just we were all gonna skate at the same time. Even at the rink, it was just kind of like a cluster at the beginning. They ba we basically just got there and put ourselves into different rooms and then they just allocated the teams based off of who went into which dressing room. I don't know if they didn't think this through or what, but five goalies were in one dressing room and one goalie was in the other dressing room. So they said everybody in this dressing room is going on the ice first, everybody in that dressing room is going on the ice second. Me being one of the five goalies in the other dressing room, I asked like one of the coaches, like, hey, like are all five of us going on first or are they going to break us up like three and three, which would probably make the most sense. He then told me to ask the other coach because like I said, there was two co-coaches. So then I went to ask the other co-coach um, what was like going on. And he was just like a complete asshole to me, to be honest. Like he asked for my name. I told him. And then he said, like, kind of yelled at me, like, what's your last name? Like, and like, just, just like very rude and very disrespectful, um, which I didn't think there was any need for. Anyway, I basically told him my name and he just kind of shoved the page in my face and was like, do you see your name on this page? And I'm like, nope. He's like, well, you're not on then. And I'm like, okay, buddy boy. Sounds good to me. So the first skate went on. I was on for the second skate because my page, my name wasn't on the page. Basically got, got dressed, got ready to go. Uh, they handed out jerseys to most of the players. However, they didn't have enough for all six of us. So two of the goalies had to borrow sweaty, wet jerseys from the goalies that just got off the ice. Appreciate the other goalie that handed me his jersey, but um, I just think it's crazy that they didn't organize this in advance. So basically the first skate we went on the ice. Um, we had zero warm-ups for the goalies, zero structure. We didn't really do drills. We just kind of scrimmaged the whole time. There was one guy just dropping the puck. It was just complete chaos. And then... Yeah, I thought I played decently well on the skate considering we didn't have any warm-ups. It was like nothing really happened. So I, I like, I can't say I played unreal, but I, I can't say I played bad either. It was just kind of like there was nothing to show because we just, it depended. I didn't have that many shots. And then afterwards they had some pizza for the guys. So I'd say that's, that's one positive thing about this team. They did provide good food throughout the weekend. Pizza was good. Maybe not the best <laughs> meal for an athlete, but a bit greasy, but it, it was pretty good. Uh, the second day we had some jambalaya or something. So that was really delicious, but Regardless, after the skate, we went back to the hotel, uh, got some rest, and then we had three skates scheduled for the following day. Basically, their plan for that day, not sure that it was a plan, but they just put everybody on the ice at the same time. So there was, it was pretty crowded out there. We had six goalies, and I don't even know how many skaters, a bunch. But again, no warm-ups for the goalies, really. I think they did a couple sessions. Like, the one coach went into the room and drew up some drills, which were awful, to be honest. And then we executed the drills for, like, two minutes maybe it was kind of a joke so during the second day I didn't really think they gave any goalies an opportunity to really showcase their talent like I said we were mostly doing scrimmages um, thought I did better the second day but you know like I said there just wasn't a lot to show as a goalie because there just wasn't that many shots I thought all the goalies to be honest played pretty well I saw some sketchy stuff going on with like the coach and the players like when every time I tried to say hello to the coach they would just ignore me it was one of the weirdest things like uh, pretty dehumanizing to be honest I would try to say hello to one of the coaches and he would just look away and look through me like I didn't exist, which was super strange. I've never had anybody just ignore you completely. So that was really odd. I went in third every time, which like, I don't, I don't really care. I'm pretty easy going with this kind of stuff. However, during one of the skates, I was, I only played maybe 10 minutes. So what happened was basically they divided into three periods. I went in third. So the first goalie played the first period, second goalie played the second period. I went in for the third period. And then halfway through my ice session, they just took me off for whatever reason. And they put the other goalie that played the first period on the other side into my net. 
I mean, to me, this was really disrespectful. However, I, I, I don't think they're organized to have like purposely sabotaged me. Like, I don't think anybody necessarily was out to get me. However, I think this was just an accident or poor organization on their part. But yeah, so we finished up day two. And we're back. We finished two days of skates. Yep. Two I just, days. Yeah, two days. It's been good. Not as organized as I would have thought, but uh, we'll see if we'll leave that in there. Uh, uh, how'd you feel out there? Pretty good. Felt pretty good. Yeah. A little tired, a little sore, but yeah. you know, four games will do that shit to you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, day one, we had a skate at around seven. Then today we had three skates. We had one at 10, one at four, and another one at seven. seven. Yeah, so it was three skates. Uh, we had six goalies, so we were kind of rotating, so we probably weren't as bagged as the players, but still a lot of hockey, and uh, yeah, I guess tomorrow is the last day, and then there'll be some cuts, so. so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll see how good it goes. Luck yeah, good luck to everybody, and uh, yeah, that's the update for now. We'll keep you posted on how things go tomorrow, so yeah. thank, thank you guys. Nice. Let's do it. So the next morning I woke up, had breakfast, uh, kind of joked with some of my buddies that this was my last breakfast, because I kind of saw the writing on the wall that this was not going to go anywhere good. Went in for the last interview, walked in, introduced myself. Hello, my name's Andrew. Shook everybody's hand at the table. There was three of them there. Sat down. And then they, the first question they asked me is, hey, what's your name? I'm like, I literally just gave you my name. I don't know how you could be asking me this, but my name's Andrew. They looked down. I could see their page in front of them. And I could just see that my name wasn't even on the paper. They didn't say anything. And they just kind of looked confused. So I was like, hey, I'm one of the goalies. Just to give them kind of a refresher. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Then they just started talking. They're like, so where'd you play last year? I'm like, uh, played in Finland. And this question really kind of pissed me off because it just showed that they had no idea who I was, where I played. They had zero research they'd done. They just basically did no work on their part to figure out who was even at these tryouts. Like, they, they just didn't care. It was just, they already had who they had in mind. Um, it didn't matter what I did at camp or who any of the goalies did at camp. They already had their mind made up. And then after that, I played in Finland and they said, do you have a spot on the team again next year? I explained that I said no to those offers and in order to come to this team and play for, you know, the Baton Rouge Zydeco team. Um, they basically had no response to that. Then they went on to explain how every goalie at camp played really well, which I do agree with. All the goalies played pretty well. I mean, none of us really had to do anything spectacular because it was a very non-eventful uh, tryout session. Then they went on to say that they would only that they're only allowed to take two goalies which is a lie because i know they could take three so now i know they're just lying to me and then they said that they might have a goalie come down from the echl which is possible i guess but the, the chances of a echl goalie wanting to play here would be i think next to nothing um, but regardless i kind of was just listening to what they had to say they weren't getting to the point that they weren't going to take me on the team so i kind of basically did it for myself i was like okay guys thanks for the opportunity thanks for having me appreciate appreciate the opportunity um i should have one question for you guys like what could i do better next time to improve or make the team next year and basically what they told me was a complete joke uh they said uh, you just need to see more pucks i knew they were going to give me a bs answer but that was just the most bs answer you could ever give me like this just pissed me off because it's like i've been a goalie since i was a kid i've seen so many pucks and i just knew at this point that i didn't want to play here even if they wanted me that this was a complete joke and i respect myself enough to not have to deal with these types of people that just don't care at all about you as a person and just have zero respect for you. So anyway, finished up that um, and then kind of laughed my way. Well, I didn't laugh. I was very respectful, obviously, but I kind of was laughing in my head as I exited the interview. Hello, everyone. Um, I just got cut. Um, that was an absolute joke. That was that was a complete joke. I'm like, uh, so what, what could I have done better to like improve? They just go, you know, um, I think you just gotta you just gotta see more pucks, you know, just see more pucks and uh you know, just keep working. Actually I don't even know if they said keep working. I think they just said keep just see more pucks. I'm like, okay, okay, sounds good. Sounds good. And then yeah, shook their hands and left. And that was that was it. They they definitely had zero record of anything. They they did not watch the goalies, in my opinion. But, like there was actually some decent goalies at camp, like I think every goalie did really well, so congrats to all the goalies that, that participated here. Um I do not think it was a fair crack for anybody, um, to be honest. I don't know how they would have possibly assessed in what was laid out at camp. Uh, yeah, we just basically did the half-assed warm-ups and then <laughs> did a scrimmage for like the entire time. And a variety, there was no timer on who was in net for however long. There was, it was 
probably the absolute worst camp I've ever been to. Well, yeah, probably up there. I've been to a few other ones that are pretty bad, but like terribly, terribly organized. It was an absolute joke. Joke of an organization, for sure. Um, I'm just laughing because I think this is hilarious. I am kind of pissed on the situation because it was a waste of my time. But that, welcome to the Fed, baby. That's, that's what the Fed's all about, you know, so. I'm gonna probably uh, drive back to Canada, t well, get as close as I can today and then try to get, finish it off tomorrow. And then, uh, yeah, reevaluate because I have no team now. So, free agent, anybody looking, you know, hit me up in the comments, right? Like, you know, <laughs> I feel really good about my game though. Um, I think I'm, I feel as good as I ever have. Uh, did camp go as, as I would have liked? Not, not exactly. I think I played well. We didn't have any warm ups or anything or any drills or any goalie skates. There was nothing to really show anything. So there's that, but no, I feel, I feel really good about my game. It's unfortunate I don't have a team right now, which is kind of crazy to me. Wild, like actually unbelievable. I don't think I've ever been more ready and more prepared to be playing at the best level I can. So yeah, this is crazy. This is crazy. So we'll see what happens, but I don't know if I'll keep wasting my time in this league. It seems like I've talked to a few guys that have been in the league for a while and it just seems like an absolute shit show. Especially for goalies. I don't know how the goalies do it here. Um, so options, I guess, would be grind it out, try to find another team. Um, I definitely think I can play in this league. Like, the skill level is... Like, there's some good players, of course, but I don't think it's... Like, there was nobody that surprised me out there in terms of, like, oh my god, this guy's unbelievable. Mind you, I have just been skating with, like, NHL and AHL guys, so, like, obviously those guys are going to be a lot better than the guys I'm skating with here. But I met some nice people at camp. It was fun. It was a good experience um, in terms of being able to travel America, but yeah, absolute shit show. So I'll keep you guys updated about this. It's crazy. So anyway, packed up my stuff, got, right, got my stuff and left. This is another side note. Um, I asked if the room would be open to grab my stuff. They said, yeah, of course. And then when I got there, it was obviously locked. So I had to wait another like 30, 40 minutes to get somebody to get the key to open it. It was very discouraging, very frustrating. My final thoughts basically were that I was lied to the whole time. I was treated with zero respect and that it wasn't really a fair tryout for me or any of the other goalies for that matter. Congratulations to the goalies that did make it. I don't have anything bad to say about any of the players there or anything like that. However, the management and the coaching staff of this organization were a complete disgrace. I just don't think they were very good people. That's not to say people can't change or maybe they are decent people, but from my experience with them, they, they were not. Yeah, I just felt taken advantage of and yeah, just like it was a complete waste of time. So, and that's it. So packed up the gear. We're heading back to Canada. What a shit show. Oh, this is the stuff that makes people not want to enjoy hockey. It's unfortunate. So anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to my story. If you guys have any experiences similar, please leave them in the comments um, or send me a DM on Instagram. I'd love to hear your stories that you guys have had or experienced in the Fed or any other leagues. I know this isn't exclusive to minor pro leagues. I know this happens in junior. I have many other junior stories of, I don't know about this bad, but similar stories. And it's unfortunate because, you know, most people in hockey are great people. However, there's some bad apples and it just really sucks when you have to deal with those people. I know for me, I've I've been around hockey and the politics of it enough to not let it phase me really anymore. Obviously, it still sucks, but I know for a lot of younger guys, this could have been could have been the last straw to make them quit hockey and I don't think I don't think it's good for the game I think more people should be playing the game and I think at the very least just give people a fair shot and give people you know the courtesy and the respect to at least treat them right you know what I mean anyway I hope uh I hope this story kind of helps others going through or looking for teams kind of in the minors and stuff like that so yeah that concludes today's video I hope you guys enjoyed that if you guys have any other hockey stories please leave them in the comments below I'll be sure to check those out if you like this content and you'd like to see more of this please hit that subscribe button hit that bell notification if you want to get alerted on my new content and um, I hope you guys follow along the rest of my journey yeah as always thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one